How to configure a Vectron non-isolated DC-DC charger on your smartphone. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode I'm going to take you through a lot of the detail of how you configure one of these Orion TR Smarts. These are the ones with the Bluetooth. This is a 12 volt in, 12 volt out, 30 amp non-isolated DC to DC charger. One of the Vectron products that we sell the most. So we're assuming that you have installed this fully in your vehicle. In our particular case, we have this power pack here that simulates the alternator and starter battery together. So this is giving us 40 amps, so it's ideal for this demonstration. Currently, I think it's on about 12 point something, 12.7 amps, uh, uh, volts or something like that. Here's our lithium ion phosphate OPS 100 battery. As you can see, connected to the output of the power supply coming to the end of the Orion Tier Smart. And we've got a common ground, so the, the black cables coming here and they all joined up. Positive coming out, going to the battery here. So this will simulate our vehicle. So we're assuming that you installed the app on your phone already, on your a mobile phone or, or a smartphone. And so when you load it up, you're presented with a device list and as you can see, I'm on my local list. So I've got a, a bunch of things here, but you probably will only have one thing which will be a Ryan Smart and this number there, which is different for each one. Right, so we'll click on this DC to DC, the Orion Smart here. You'll put in your pairing code, which will be on the side of the DC to DC charger or the box. And the first thing it'll do is tell you that it's going to offer instant readout. I'm going to say, yeah, no problem. Enable that, and then it will start off in this particular power supply mode. So interestingly, they don't start by default in charger mode. They always start in this power supply mode. So to get to set this up as a charger, you would hit the little cog on the top right-hand corner there. That will bring up several things. Note that you can't choose your battery type. That's because it is in power supply mode. So the first thing you'll do is to change the function from power supply to charger. And now you see the battery then pops up. So the screen changes somewhat. Battery pops up. If you want to, you can click on the three dots, the ellipses there. You can go to product info and you can change the name. So we're going to say Orion Smart demo just for this. That means if you've got multiple DC to DC charges, it's pretty easy to find your particular one. Okay, let's come back out there. Now we've changed that to charger. Now the next thing we will need to do is to choose our battery. So let's click on that. These things are by default set to a, a lithium ion phosphate battery, but you can click on the top right here on the factory default and select a preset. And if you go all the way to the bottom, that is where lithium ion phosphate or life pure 4 is. Let's choose that. And having chosen that battery, there are certain defaults that kick in for the battery. So the absorption voltage or, or the bulk and absorption voltage is 14.2 and the float is 13.5. I would leave these figures as they are. If you have a battery that is not 14.2, then you should change this to whatever your battery actually is. We set our batteries to 14.2 being the default that Victron uses and a lot of bat more of the more modern battery manufacturers choose this default as well. So I recommend that you go with this particular default of 14.2 and 13.5. So that's fine on the battery. So let's go back to settings. Now I'm going to cover the last bit first and then I'm going to spend a lot of time on the engine shutdown detection because that's the area that people struggle with the most. So the, the in, input voltage lockout is basically just to protect, if you like, to protect the starter battery. So what we, what we are saying here is that when the starter battery goes down to 12.5, so basically it's reading this here, and if it goes down to 12.5 or less, that it will stop working essentially as a charger because it needs to protect the starter battery. The starter battery should not go below 12.5. If you're happy of setting this lower, you can, but I would not recommend it. I would leave it at 12.5 and it restarts at 12.8. So basically what this is telling us is that if the starter battery drops to 12.5 or less, this is going to stop working, so the DC-DC is going to stop working as a charger, and the starter battery needs to come up to at least 12.8 for it to actually kick back in as a start as a charger again. So important to get that right just to protect your starter battery. That's all that that is for really. Right, so we've covered the function and chosen your battery and set your input voltage lockout. Now we're going to spend quite a lot of time talking about the engine shutdown detection because this is the most important 
important part. So with that, when you first get going, this is going to be set on smart alternator as it is now. So that's the start voltage of 14 volts and delayed start of 13.3, uh, etc., etc. And if you know that you have a smart alternator, then these are good settings to have. If you don't have a smart alternator, then just choose regular sun, uh, regular alternator there. Uh, interestingly, none of the parameters change, so they're the same for smart and regular. And if your alternator is sort of putting out a reasonable voltage when it starts up, say 14 volts or more, then you're good to go with these kind of values. But having high values of 14 volts has some advantages and disadvantages. So first advantage is that obviously when 14 volts has been reached, it usually indicates that everything's in good shape on the starter battery and that battery has probably been topped up enough. And so, you know, in theory, you just crank the engine for a short while, use some juice from the starter battery, charge it back up again, so it's more than 14 volts, and it's safe now to start drawing from that system. The disadvantage of setting a start voltage of, of 14 is there are two main disadvantages. Firstly, not all alternators are actually capable of getting up to 14 volts. And surprisingly, uh, we found this to be a problem with quite a number of smart alternators. So a, a surprising number of smart alternators don't ever get to 14 volts or they take a long time to get there. You know, you have to be running that vehicle for quite some time. And so that's the first problem is that your DC to DC charger never actually kicks in because the start voltage of 14 volts has never been reached. The second disadvantage of such a high voltage is that it seems that when that is set quite high, the start voltage is set quite high, which affects all the other parameters, that your DC to DC, if your alternator has just managed to get there, it doesn't doesn't charge at the full 30 amp rate. And so this people are often very surprised that they've put in a Victron DC to DC charger rated at 30 amps, and they're surprised when it's only outputting 15 or 20 amps into the battery. And that can be affected considerably by the start voltage. We find there are two factors which affects this. The one is the start voltage in the setup and the other one is the thickness of the cables. When people have really thin cables running from the starter battery to, to this, then that it affects that. So what we generally do is I quite often I get to this 14 here, you click on it, I change it to 13 and that you change to 13, everything else changes as well. And what that means is most alternators will reach 13 volts. So the threshold to actually start volt charging at 13 is fine. It might mean that this hasn't quite come up enough, but so this will kick in and start charging the uh, lithium battery. That may bring this down a little bit because it hasn't actually fully charged. And so this will turn off again and it might do it two or three times before this has finally got enough juice stored back in it and then this stays on and charges at the full 30 amp. It's a bit of a quirky thing with the Victron DC to DC chargers, but we've learned that in order to make it work really well, uh, that's one of the things that you'll need to do. The other thing, just as a matter of interest, is that these are air-cooled, they've got fins at the back, so you wouldn't mount this flat like this, it would be on a vertical wall either uh, upright or completely upside down so that you've got convection working in your favor. Cool it down and they do get really hot. Usually if they're charging at their full rate they get too hot to actually hold. So they throttle themselves to in order to not burn out and that is another reason why people will look on the app and see they're not charging at their full rate. Basically they've throttled back to protect themselves. But yeah, these these are the settings that we use. So your start voltage of 13, delayed start 13.6, but it's really the, the start voltage is the most important one that you want to get right. And, and we use a combination of D plus with the 13 volts. So we, we know the engine must absolutely must be running. And so we do that by using D plus into the H term over here and we set our start voltage to 13 volts unless the alternator 
really does hit 14 quite quickly and effectively and then we're quite happy to leave 14 but you need as I said you need to have good cables coming to the DC DC and you might find that it doesn't uh, operate at its full 30 amps so we find to get it to full 30 amps 13 volts seems to work much better so hopefully that's useful to you we've got a document we'll include a, a link below that describes in detail very detail on how to set this up so you've got lots of uh, screen grabs there showing you the settings that we prefer and uh, what it all means It'd be great if you go to that document we also have an, another accompanying document which talks about installing a relay alongside the DC to DC charger that is appropriate for situations where you already have some sort of EBL electro block with a split charge system so you don't want to have two competing systems from the same source charging at different voltages so suggest you look at those links down below if this has been useful to you uh, leave us a comment and uh, we'll see you in the next episode so cheers Thank you.